The premise behind the audio sidechain is almost identical to that of the envelope follower, with a couple of exceptions. One is that you can limit the range of what the signal is going to pay attention to. So if you don't want the low end triggering movement, like in this case, we have a drum loop with a lot of low end, you could have it not listen to the low end and instead only focus in on the high end. And you also can, of course, no longer be tied to just that signal itself. And so I'll show you that in a second, you can route it somewhere else. But for now, we'll just leave it on the device input. And so for all intent and purpose, this is working the same way as the envelope follower was just working. And I can go ahead and route this to something like frequency. And then here, you can also drive in the gain like you can do on the envelope follower. And in this case, it's actually kind of limiting our range. So I'm actually gonna bring that back so we get that full range of motion. So now let's say I don't want this listening to the low end. You can see how now that range of motion is a lot less. There's a lot less signal being triggered in. And now I could drive the gain if I want a little bit more action. Like that. And it's still impacting the whole signal. This isn't filtering anything in terms of the sound, just to make that clear. But it is changing the range of motion. So something like that. And what you may need to do is even turn the gain down a little bit and then go in and go full force. And that's where you can really then start to get some pretty serious action. So something like that. And if you want the detection to be RMS, that's fine too. It's just probably going to smooth things out a little bit more. You can see that the spikes aren't as spiky as they were when we were on peak. So definitely some things for you to uh, try to mess around with. More likely, though, what you're going to end up doing is setting up the audio sidechain to work off of a, dish, a, a different track. So in this case, we have our pad sound and our drums. And what I would probably do is have this react to the envelope of the drums as compared to the envelope of the pad, which is pretty static. So I can go into drums, and I can choose pre or post. Pre may make more sense, because if I go and I mute this, it's still going to give me signal. And again, this may be a time where I want to limit it, so I want it only like reacting to the kick drum. That would be this situation here. And I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll get something so that it will work here. What I need to do is bring the attack bag and then drive it in. Now when we bring in the kick. You can hear that reacting like so. It's a little bit too extreme right now. But if I want this moving and jumping even more, I'd allow more of the signal in. Something like that. Let's actually use like a high pass that we can really then hear it. And we'll increase the release time. drums really pop through and it doesn't just have to be used for sidechain applications like this you could really set it up anywhere you can even use dummy clips so if you're going to use like a dummy clip to have something trigger you would just make sure that you set that to pre and then you would just go ahead and mute it so it's still going to react and that's really all there is to it. So um, this has been something that has existed in Bitwig before. I'm not going to really go into any more detail. Uh, you can find a lot of videos I've done on the audio mod already. 
um, if you just search that on the channel. So that is the audio sidechain modulator. Uh, pretty straightforward and something that a lot of people want. And here it is.